Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, Marina. Hi! Today, I wanted to do a very different video about the 10 lessons that I've learned in my 20s. So, disclaimer, I am still in my 20s. Um, <laughs> but I feel like there are so many things that have changed, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually. And I just wanted to reflect a little how much have changed, grown and also share the wisdom that I learned in my 20s that can probably help you. So everything is kind of oriented towards mental health, well-being, setting boundaries, self-reflecting, self-worth. Just because I think once you understand pillars, it changes and it influences everything around you. These are kind of the 10 main shifts that I noticed in my life. Let's get into it. The very first one is a lesson that my mom taught me. We were talking one day and she said, you know in life you will get what you need and not what you want. For me, it was very hard to acknowledge this because I grew up thinking that I could be whoever I want, do whatever I want. If I was working hard enough, I would get everything I want out of life. But eventually she was right. I do believe that we get what we truly need. And I'm not talking about materialistic things. I'm talking about what your soul truly needs. It was a bit frustrating for me not to have all the things that I wanted in life. It makes sense because first of all, all the things that I thought I wanted, I didn't really want it. Well, I wanted to work and be some sort of journalist. Been there, done that, was writing for a magazine and I realized it wasn't what I wanted. Today makes sense. I think this one, this was one of the most important lessons that my mom taught me. The lesson number two is that intuition and gut feeling is real and the importance of trusting myself. In my early 20s, I didn't really believe in gut feeling or intuition. I didn't really know what it was. Well, obviously, I used to read everywhere like, oh, intuition is super important, but I never really understood how this applied to me because I had no clue how to listen to it and then did some research. The thing is, I was never taught how to listen to my intuition or trust my gut feeling. So for those who don't know, this is your gut, center of your body. Growing up from time to time, I had this unshakable feeling, you know, when facing a choice that I should go right and not left by this instead of that. And I couldn't explain it. By reading about it, I realized that this was my intuition, my gut feeling, and it was something that I needed to follow. The intuition is like guiding you towards where you're supposed to go. So many times we don't listen to it. I had a friend back in the days, every time I would go to her house, I would feel, I would not feel comfortable enough to go to the bathroom and pee, TMI. I don't know why. I was always bloated, like I was uncomfortable, my belly was like painful. So it had nothing to do with food. I was just very comfortable at this friend's house. And it's not because we had disagreements or, or things like that, but I couldn't explain why I was just always uncomfortable. You know, with time, I ended up not being friends with this person anymore and I met another friend. I never felt the discomfort I felt at my first friend's house. I think this was my intuition telling me this first friend is not good for you. That's why you're not feeling comfortable. I think learning how to trust my intuition showed me where I was supposed to go, who I was supposed to be friends with, who I could trust, who I could not trust, because I do believe that our bodies understand much faster than our human brains. For example, you're putting your hand on top of like a flame. Your body is going to react first because it's going to burn your hand, then the information goes up to the brain and then you're gonna take out your hand. So your body is always the very first one that gets the information because of neurotransmitters and all that stuff. To me, intuition is the same thing. The intuition sends energies that your brain doesn't. Your brain is just going to rationalize. Maybe your gut feeling new, maybe your intuition new, but you didn't know how to listen to it. Just like I didn't know how to listen to it. So what I do now is like I close my eyes when I have a 
choice when I have a question and I don't know the answer to. I'll try to breathe either during my meditation or listening to a soothing music. I don't know. The intuition does its job, basically. The third thing is that rejection is a blessing in disguise. I don't like the fact that we call rejection rejection because it has such a negative meaning behind it. What if we called rejection something better is coming for you? I wish it was only one word. We've rejected you for this job or like this person ghosted you and rejected you. What if we actually call it there is a better person for you? There is a better work opportunity for you? Then it wouldn't be so scary. I had such a fear of rejection in my early 20s, especially applying <laughs> to internships and jobs. Oh my god, the amount of no's I had gotten, it would always push me to, but not in a good way, to self-reflect and to be like, oh, I'm not enough for them. I'm not enough for this. Oh, this person ghosted me. I'm not good enough for them. So I would kind of try to change, not my identity, but at least rethink and question my identity and what made me me because it was not enough for these people or this job. I think I was always kind of a people pleaser. And the minute I realized that rejection is not rejection, but that there is something better, then it's not as negative anymore. It truly is the blessing in disguise. It's just that I didn't see it that way when I got rejected. Let go of what you cannot change. In my early 20s, I was, ugh, I had so much anxiety, but like 24 seven anxiety. Anxiety about my job, anxiety about my internship, anxiety about college, anxiety about my relationship, anxiety about my friends, anxiety about life, anxiety. I, I could name you probably like make an entire book out of all my anxiety and fear and negative emotions. One day, <laughs> I went to see a healer that was specialized in Chinese medicine and this healer told me to read a book. He told me to get the power of now. First of all, mind-blowing book. Second of all, it is a hard one to read, but it's totally worth it. It's the importance of being in the present and making sure that you starve your ego when there is a situation and you cannot change it or influence it. You have to let it go. You have to surrender because if you have anxiety, you're stuck in the future. And if you have regret, you're stuck in the past. So you're always going to be on these two extremes. The only way for me not to feel either regret or anxiety is to be in the present. And I have to stop worrying and overthinking about it and believe that the universe got my back one way or another. So that was something that I learned and that I think is super valuable because now I live a life that is not free of anxiety. Anxiety. I'll never be free of anxiety. I have a brain. I am a woman in the 21st century, so I'll never be free of my anxiety. But I don't let my anxiety influence my choices or determine anything in my life. The next lesson that I learned is that the narrative hurt people hurt people is BS. We've heard it 20 times and we use these sentences as an excuse to excuse people's behaviors and i refuse to consider it like that i refuse to agree with that statement because there are so many things that i tolerated i was like oh this person suffered this person got hurt so it's normal that their response to their pain is to hurt being hurt is not an excuse to hurt other people. When I got hurt, massively hurt by life, I could have decided to be a sour person. I could have decided to be super mean, to be disrespectful, to insult people. I didn't because I refuse to let my pain define who I am. If you are keeping up with this narrative, you have to work on yourself because we will never improve, evolve as human beings if everybody does that because life will eventually hurt a lot of people and if we keep on hurting because we've been hurt we'll never grow number seven is no compromise on well-being or mental health there are so many times where i didn't want to do things and i ended up doing it anyway because i was compromising on my well-being on my health and also because i was a little bit of a people pleaser so i would do things you know to be with friends be around people until i realized that it was it was not good i think when you grow up you have a lot of realizations i don't want to have to compromise on my values, my well-being, who I am, what makes me me, my identity, my personality, my character. I don't want to have to compromise on my well-being. I feel like now is super, super hard to push me to compromise. So far, so good. 
was hard, but so far so good. <laughs> the next lesson that I learned is the importance of feeling my emotions. I was, before my 20s, I was a very active little girl. I would always say when I was happy, I was super happy. When I was sad, I was super sad. Was no in between. If I was joyful, I was super joyful. Um, I was not like, <laughs> no, I did that. <laughs> At some point in my life, in my early 20s, I I didn't know how to deal with my emotions because I had been told my entire life, don't show people your emotions, it's a weakness. If you cry, it's a weakness. Until I realized that, for example, crying, because it was my thing, I was a crybaby, was actually important, valuable, beneficial for me to cry and to release because it was my way of releasing my frustration, my anxiety. The more I would bottle up my emotions, the more sick it would make me, if it makes sense. If I couldn't speak my truth, I would have like a sore throat. If I had a hard time with something going on in my life, I would have some sort of tummy ache because it was me figuratively trying to, you know, get over the idea. So yeah, when I realized my emotions needed to be felt and expressed, I just felt so much better. I stopped getting sick all the time. I'm, I stopped having headaches all the time or sore throat all the time or belly pain because I would speak whatever I was feeling. If I was feeling frustrated, I was gonna say it. I was gonna write it down in a journal. If I was so frustrated and it made me wanna cry, I would cry. Or sometimes like I would say to people, don't freak out. I'm gonna cry because I need to release the frustration, but there is, you know, I'm not asking for help. I'm not like super upset. I just need to express my emotion. So I would, I would do that. And uh, I just felt so much better afterwards. The importance of feeling all your emotions, whether they're good or bad, and to fully express it. I've cried in very uncomfortable situations, like at a party. Oh my God, <laughs> I was sobbing at a party a year ago literally it was like a launch party and i i was just like sobbing in the corner because of life <laughs> and it was okay like after that probably 10 to 15 minutes later i felt you know that i was okay the next one pick your people because i was a people pleaser in my early 20s i would i would let everyone around me i valued the quantity which was wrong on so many levels and it took me forever it took me life it took me growing growing up the people you're going to pick your friends boyfriends girlfriends the people you're going to pick if they're not your number one cheerleaders supporters if they don't have compassion towards you they're not your friends making fun of who you are they're not your friends you want around you people that will support you 100 percent people that will hold you accountable you want people you can trust i know it doesn't make much sense but maybe one day in your life you will think about this moment of the video and you'll be like mm, narina said that i hope you do <laughs> because I didn't know until very recently, to be honest. I had a conversation with one of my friends and I just had this like moment in my head. I was like, what? But it, it is actually real. It is actually real. And every single one of my friends, like I support them and I love them. Whatever they do, I will be there for them, support their business, their job and everything. This is something super, 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 super important. And the very last lesson that I learned in my 20s is self-worth. And I know it sounds very stupid and very simple. Self-worth is the most important thing that I learned in my 20s. To see myself for who I really was. Caring, loving, smart, supportive, creative person. And it took me growing up, going through life to actually see it. To see how valuable I am as a person, a friend, a girlfriend, a human being, a woman instead of accepting what people said about me all these lessons once i realized them they started changing my relationships my friendships the way i see money the way i see work the way i see my career the way i see life in general so they touched all the areas of my life i think i've, I've changed a lot and i think one of the most important thing is probably to do this exercise once or twice a year to see where you at, to see how you've grown, how much you've changed because we always see what we're not. We always see the work we still have to do, but we rarely reflect on everything we've done before. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know which lesson is your favorite. If you feel like you've changed or grown these past five to 10 years, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you next week. Bye.
Bye.